This video was originally created by the Gastrol YouTube channel with help from the fully charged show. The India specific version is researched and created by Plugin India and narrated by Rafi Halim. So the argument goes electric vehicles don't pollute but the electricity powering the electric vehicles does pollute. Some even say that it pollutes even more than a diesel or petrol burning car. If we are going to look beyond the EV itself to the energy that powers it, shouldn't we do the same for the fossil fuel combustion car? So what goes into producing the fuel that you burn in your car every day? <coughs> diesel or petrol starts as oil an average of 1798 meters below the surface of the earth. A great deal of oil is extracted using what is called a pump jack. Pump jacks don't run by themselves. In most cases, they use electricity. It takes an average of 9960 kilowatt hours of electricity every month to drive one pump jack. To put that into context, that is enough electricity to power a Tata Nexon EV for more than 82000 kilometers, enough to drive for 6.8 years. India imports 82% of its oil needs and consumes more than 44 lakh barrels of oil per day. The electricity usage for more than 1.4 lakh onshore wells that supply oil to India is over 1415 gigawatt hours a month. That is a lot of electricity and that is just to get the oil out of the ground. If we use that electricity to power electric vehicles directly, it would be enough to power over 1 crore 17 lakh Tata Nexon EVs for a month. What about deep sea drilling? The most common way of powering an offshore oil rig is with a diesel generator. An average oil rig generator uses 20 to 30 metric tons of diesel per day. The electrical equivalent of this is 26 lakh kilowatt hours per month. There are an estimated 462 offshore oil rigs producing oil for India using over 13 crore 80 lakh kilowatt hours of energy a month. All this pumping combined would be enough to power over 1 crore 28 lakh Tata Nexon EVs. This is just from the energy used to pump oil out of the ground and offshore for India. So not only does fuel pollute when we burn it in our cars, we are also using a huge amount of electricity just to pump the oil that makes the fuel. Combining the pollution from the tailpipe emissions with the emissions generated to pump oil out of the ground is not a pretty picture and pumping oil is not clean crores of liters are spilled into the ocean every year creating havoc for fish and other wildlife then that oil needs to be transported most of the oil is pumped through pipelines there are over 5 lakh 43000 kilometers of pipeline in the world carrying most of the 10 crore barrels a day that we consume These pipelines use pump stations that use even more energy. Oil is shipped. The oceans are unregulated as regard to emissions. So ships use the cheapest, dirtiest fuel possible to keep costs down, making them one of the largest pollution sources on the planet. Shipping is responsible for an estimated 100 crore tons of CO2 per year, and 10% of that is shipping oil. because these tanker ships pollute so much many countries do not allow them to operate near their coastline so they have to be towed into port where the oil is transferred to a refinery refining oil takes a huge amount of energy and generates even more pollution refining is done by heating oil up to 427 degrees celsius and heating 10 crore barrels of oil a day to these temperatures requires an enormous amount of energy heating this oil generates so much pollution that refineries create a serious health hazard anywhere they operate refineries are the number one pollution source in many major cities around the world it is so bad that people who live near these refineries have a marked increase in diseases such as lung cancer <coughs> once the oil has been refined it is transported to fuel stations in diesel trucks creating even more pollution and then this fuel is burned in cars and trucks right in our cities where we live and breathe these cars and trucks have internal combustion engines that are extremely inefficient 
70% of the energy from burning fossil fuels is wasted as heat while only 30% goes to turn your wheels so after we use all that electricity pumping oil out of the ground refining it transporting it then we waste 70% when we burn it fossil fuel production is an incredibly dirty inefficient process from start to finish when we contrast all this to powering an electric vehicle the difference is very stark electricity does not need to be pumped from thousands of meters underground transported with trucks or trains or pumped along pipelines it does not need to be shipped overseas it does not need to be refined and it is not polluting where we live and breathe even if electricity is produced from burning coal the power plant is far away from population centers transferred over power lines keeping any direct pollution away from the population and if the ev is powered with clean electricity it is clean from start to finish in india 39.1% of electricity comes from sources that emit no co2 in europe it is even better at 56% and the percentage of clean energy is growing every year as coal and gas plants are being replaced by renewable energy sources so what about the lithium used in ev batteries lithium is a metal that is mined in the deserts of australia china argentina and chile besides being a key ingredient in batteries lithium is also ingested as a medicine for bipolar disorder much has been made about the environmental impact of lithium mining but this is a little bit overblown Australia is the largest producer of lithium in the world. If there were any major environmental problems with this mining, some Australians would be talking about it. But what is Australia really talking about when it comes to pollution? Oil refining. Yes, oil refining is creating a much bigger environmental risk than all the lithium mining going on anywhere in the country. Australia is not a very densely populated country. They consume 1% of the world's oil supply. and only refine one fourth of the oil they consume but they mine 50% of the world's lithium so a country that refines one fourth of 1% of the world's oil and mines 50% of the world's lithium the biggest contributor to pollution and risk to human health in australia is oil refineries that does not even take into consideration the drilling pumping transporting and burning of this oil this is just refining it the more you look into it the argument that battery production is somehow as bad as the cycle of fossil fuels is ridiculous all the lithium mining in the world to date has not done anything like as much damage to the environment as just one major oil spill So what about the batteries what happens to EV batteries when they get old and are discarded when no longer practical in an electric vehicle batteries can be used as an energy storage to power a home or business giving them a second life and when they can no longer be used for this they are recycled broken down to recover the valuable metals in these batteries to be reused in the next generation of electric vehicles It looks a bit silly to use so much electricity to pump oil out of the ground, create tons of pollution transporting it and refining it to finally waste 70% of it burning it in our cars when we could simply use that electricity directly to power electric vehicles, eliminating the pollution from refining and burning petrol or diesel in inefficient internal combustion engines. It is obvious when you look at the big picture oil production is a dirty wasteful process especially when compared to the alternative powering EVs with renewable electricity. Aha look at that that doesn't look too good that looks better I think I'm going to try this one out. Okay yeah nice inside wow Oh sorry wow this thing is fast see ya One of the last obstacles preventing many people from going electric besides misinformation is people who live in apartments and condominiums with shared parking. Many of these residents have no way to install a car charger. If you are a lawmaker, sit on a city council or serve on the board of any housing association, if you own rental property, you can do something to help. 
what to install car chargers or indeed install them yourselves in car parks or on the street so people who live in apartments can have a place to charge their electric vehicles there are companies that even offer ways that you can make a profit from these chargers support taxing of fossil fuels and use the subsidies to support the shift to electric vehicles with the right incentives and political will change can happen very quickly in norway they have made a huge shift to electric vehicles in a very short time electric vehicle sales in norway have reached over 50% of all vehicles sold support the installation of solar panels wherever possible going solar now is cheaper than buying electricity from the grid and starts paying for itself from day 1 And if you are fortunate enough to own your own home, get an EV and install solar panels. You will save thousands on fuel and electricity and the peace of mind knowing that you are not contributing to the horribly dirty oil and gas industry. Share this video, post it to forums like Reddit, Nextdoor, Facebook and others to help spread the word. Lastly, this is an open source video. You are free to translate this video into another language for reposting. Contact the Gas Troll channel for a version you can add a translated voice over and text to. The day when our cities are clean from sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide and other toxic chemicals and particulates emitted from tailpipes and oil refineries can happen. We have the technology to do this now. Supporting this transition to electric transportation will bring this day closer to fruition. We hope you have enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. and stay clean ah <sighs>